Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Amalgam Ash, and this is Smile Game Builder Game Development Dev Vlog number three for my submission to my own game jam, the SGB 2022 Returners Game Jam, uh, for my submission called Irredacted. It's a made up word, I think, but it's a working title, so whatever. It's an Unis Honest fan game that's going to play a lot like I'm on observation duty and it will be a free jam game forever so uh, the next thing we need to do is get out of here we're gonna place another event panel down we'll go ahead and give this one the uh, yellow button graphic And we're going to need five panels total here. No left side conditions. Activate when interacted with. Great. Five panels total. Check switch. If anomaly one equals one, then change switch. Oh, is this my, uh, my, my, my anomaly fixer? All right. So... checking event switches here when that is on turn it off and then let me guess anomaly one fixed equals one yes right there so this is the button that I'm going to push whenever the anomalies are active so that I can turn them off now the anomalies spawn right now in a random manner which I'll I'll get to fixing that later but I mean, it's by design, so it's not really, let's fix it. It's more, we have to modify that code in order to do our testing part two or part three. We'll turn that one on. So I think that's about it for those three. And then var active anomalies, ah, yes. Minus one. Whoop, pop, pop, stop, stop, stop. Value one, subtract. One, two, three, four, and the end branching. But I think, comment, here we go. We check the anomaly value first. If it has been activated, we deactivate it. This check must occur before active anomalies can decrement. Otherwise, the buttons can be used to cheat. So, we don't want cheating. I do want to put that comment in here though, it's never too late to start building good code habits. By the way, if you are one of the fine individuals who have entered my game jam with an intention to submit a project file that's not a game in and of itself, I hope you too think about commenting all of your events you need not comment every line of code just spell out what the event does in a single note if you wish you can be as detailed as you want though so you copy you paste you right here and actually I'll move these bad boys kind of respectively in front of their anomaly events the second one is going to check for anomaly 2 when it's on, we're going to turn it off, and then we're going to turn Anomaly 2 fixed on. And then we'll still subtract 1. Then we're going to paste that again. Event settings, Anomaly 3. If Anomaly 3 is on, there's, there's going to be way more than three anomalies. This is the uh, proof of concept phase right now. I have to make sure what I want to happen, how I want the player to play the game. I have to make sure that that can happen. And then once it can, I can scale out. Way out. I can be absolutely ridiculous with the anomalies. Make this the stopped point. All right, that looks nice and clean and even and good. I'm feeling pretty good about this so far. 
project is now ready for proof of concept testing part two already. Getting faster, activate an anomaly, interact with the corresponding button to fix it. If all three anomalies can be fixed and do not respawn, the test is successful. That's gonna be, uh... That won't be too bad, I think. Because we can look, well, I have to look in there actually. We will have to look in there, we will have to look in there. Um, so we'll just spawn an anomaly, which there we go, the barrel has become a book shelf the anomaly has been spawned no oh, that's that's completely different I borked that up let's fix it though boop there we go it works what's my debug menu say active anomalies is now negative one that's because I hit the stupid red button when I shouldn't have right let's actually restart because the test has now been spoiled here we go active anomalies right here is now zero as it should be we have triggered anomaly three randomly active anomalies is one the random number is three and anomaly three is on anomaly three fixed is not so that's fine we're going to go to the third button and we have fixed it let's take a look Eww, Anomaly 3 Active is still on the screen. Well, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, text on the screen is persistent. It stays on the screen even if the condition that caused it to be there is no longer present. That's what I'm getting from this test. So, interact with this button again. Boop. Anomaly 1 is active. Boop. Go away, Anomaly 1. Yeah, the text on the, on the screen is it's still there. It needs to be deleted with an event panel. So we'll do that. But I have got Anomaly 1 fixed on, and Anomaly 3 fixed is now on, so these two will no longer spawn, no matter how many times I hit this button. The second Anomaly is the one that will spawn, and now none of them can spawn, right? That's right, because my, my, my event logic is solid. Except for this glaring error, this absolutely rookie mistake. Well, it's not a rookie mistake because I didn't know it's an intermediate mistake. So, event settings, we want to delete the text. This code will be used in the final version of the game. It won't be in a switch. This is the code that will be in the menu that you access to clear the anomalies, to report them. Um, first. So you know what? I don't actually need to worry about that because the text on the screen, the text isn't going to stay on the screen. There's no reason for the text to stay on the screen because that's not going to be an active part of the game. I'm not going to have the text on the screen showing you what anomalies are active. That's only for testing purposes. So actually, I'm going to leave them alone. But I am going to do my uh, test again to see if warning pops up. And it does. That's beautiful. I love it. Warning. The warning in the full game will be a, a, a message that pops up. And then it will go away. It won't be persistent and stay there. So, yeah. Our testing is working out just fine. So, make fourth and fifth anomaly spawns, make fourth and fifth anomaly fix buttons. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll be adding some logic to the spawn anomaly button. So, we're gonna copy you, we're gonna paste you here, we're gonna paste you here. And we'll, we'll go ahead and deal with these before we do anything else. We need to change these guys. I know Mali four. I know Mali four fixed. I want to make everyone aware that the project file that I create for this game is actually what I'm going to be submitting. I, I'm I'll make two things. One, I'm gonna make the game with all of the Unis Onus content. Two, I'm going to make the project file without that stuff because I can't just be distributing that stuff. And I don't, technically, I, I don't have any right to make a fan game about it either. So I'm going to be disclaiming that. But 
if I ever get a message, a takedown or anything like that, I'll have to take it down. But I don't think that I will. I think that Mark and Ethan, in that spirit, they've, they've said, you know, if you want to make things to remember us by, to remember the channel by, <laughs> you can do that. It's fine. Um, so that's kind of where my head's at. It, it's going to be fine to distribute the game and maybe they'll play it which would be really cool but the uh, the big the bigger win sort of is I'm gonna distribute the project file without any of the stuff that I'm not allowed to distribute without any of the DLC that I can't distribute anything like that I'm gonna distribute the project file itself so you guys who have SGB can build off of this system if you want, if you like this, this framework, you can use it. I don't actually have anything like that. I mean, I have some, some tricks here and there. Some cool little proofs of concepts. But nothing, nothing quite like this. This is going to be freely distributed in its SGB form. And then it's going to be freely uh, a video game in its Unis Honus form. I think that's right. No conditions need to be changed for, not only for, whoops, gotta watch out for that. This is where things get a little tricky too, like if I were to copy these buttons and paste like all of the I don't know how many events I'm gonna have total 20 30 60 if I do that the testing will be so it'll make me so complacent that I will miss things and I know that I'll miss things so we don't want to we don't want to miss anything so we're gonna be as thorough as we can, we're just going to take it slow, we're going to copy little by little. I think that's what working me was thinking when he typed up that notepad document. Which, by the way, I typed that up throughout my work shift um, on break. And on breaks, I should say, and on lunch and such. So, But I had this stuff in my head for hours. Like... It's easier to think about a process and make notes on a process when you're busy doing something completely different. It's like sometimes I'll, I'll try to work through an idea for a video and I'll, uh, I'll think about it in the car. I'm so good when I'm in the car because I'm actually focused mostly on driving and like not crashing and dying. So this is, I think this is what I, I think this is a complete test. All right, here we go. By the way, if you're just tuning in and you don't know what SGB is and you're not sure about who this character is and stuff, but you do know who Unis Honus is because I'm hoping this reaches fans of Unis Honus personally. Uh, this is not Mark or Ethan. <laughs> it's just a character that is default with this game engine. So Anomaly 2 is active. One is active, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, three is active, and that one disappeared completely. And four is not becoming active at all. So there are problems with four and five. And if I were bug testing 60 of these, I'd be going crazy right about now. And I want all of my events on one map, as I've explained before in another video. I want them all on one map where I can see them 
before I go distributing them out amongst the other maps. This is how I work. There are three active anomalies, and all three of those are on, but four and five are not, so... Oh, that's because I didn't add anything to the, the, the button. It's because I'm dumb. Okay. Alright. Okay, cool. I know what to do now. So, we're gonna go to the appropriate display mode. Copy. Paste. It's so fulfilling to know that I'm a fool. We are now going to look for a value between... Whoops. Wait a minute. We don't want that. Oh yeah, no, no, we're good, we're good. You know what, while I'm thinking about it before I forget, go up to the top and change the max of this to 5 because that's going to drive me nuts. I know I'm not going to think about that before I play test again, so... Now, if random number is equal to 4 and anomaly 4 fixed is off and then anomaly... 4 is off, then turn on Anomaly 4, and add 1, 2 active anomalies. Good. We've got one more thing to do though. If it's 5, and if Anomaly 5 fixed is off, and Anomaly 5 is off, meaning it's not active, then turn on the switch to signify that it is active and we'll add one to active anomalies. So, apply that, okay that. I should be good to go with just those changes. Let's find out. First of all, save, play test, F4 to full screen it. Anomaly four is active. What say you, debug menu? Yeah, it sure is. I don't know why it leaves full screen when I look at the debug. Um, Anomaly 3 is active, but the barrel number 5 just completely disappeared. We'll look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Can I get the second one to trigger? Yep, and game over appears at the very top left corner of the screen, but you can't see it. So, this is exciting because it means I'm scaling out my test and I'm not sucking. So, game over. Apply, okay. And what was the other thing? I need to fix your settings. Your default state. Oh, you need to be set to that. Yes. What about you? Do you need that too? I think I got you correctly. Yeah, you're you're fine. You're correct. Okay. That that had a that was watching anomaly three. The the switch for anomaly three. Okay. We're gonna test it again. This time I'm gonna check the uh, fixing buttons. Testing is a beast, man. It's a bear. Don't hit the button. You haven't don't need to fix an anomaly. There we go. Anomaly 5 is active. Fix it. Good. Anomaly 2 is active. Fix it. Anomaly 1 is active. Fix it. It fixes just fine. Anomaly 4 is active. Fix it. Anomaly 3? Come on. There you are. Fix it. What's the debug menu say? There are no active anomalies. Random number was set to 3. We don't care. Anomaly 1 is off, fixed is on, Anomaly 2 fixed is on, 3 fixed is on, 4 fixed is on, 5 fixed, it's beautiful. It is everything I want it to be. It's perfect. So, we have done this. Now copy the button for spawning anomalies and paste one onto the map. Oh boy, the new spawner button will spawn two random anomalies instead of one. Okay, as with the first one, it will not resummon an anomaly that has been fixed, nor attempt to resummon one already active. Um, 
Here's where things get a little scary, but there's something that I need to do first. I didn't leave myself these instructions, but I'm gonna go ahead and do them. The, uh, the current setup here, I've got five total of these nice if nests, and each one is focused on one number, and only one time do I roll this random number. And if it goes through, all five of these and none of them match the number that was rolled the event ends but I don't want that to happen because when it when the clock strikes four and uh, you've taken care of some of the random anomalies I want the anomaly that is chosen at four to still spawn not going to be one that you've taken care of before but I want something to spawn something new so for that reason we're gonna re-roll uh, we're actually gonna put a loop I have to be careful about this. Loop, brother. I need to copy everything and paste it right there. Before I do that, I'm going to copy this event and paste it right here. Okay, back to this one. And we're going to go into the event settings. We're gonna go to display mode, and we're gonna copy everything. We're actually gonna cut it. Looks scary, right? We're gonna paste it right here. Now it's all inside the loop. Yeah, makes sense. There's nothing to click on in the loop event panel. So, now, We'll have these, um, ooh, I don't want an end event panel. I want the escape loop panel added to each of these five, you know? Because escape loop is gonna make so much more sense than end event. Because it, it, they're essentially the same thing, but once I start running through here twice, I will not want them to be the same. So I have an escape loop, an escape loop, an escape loop, an escape loop, and an escape loop, so I can hit apply, okay. Hopefully that didn't break anything, but now it's time for a play test that I did not schedule, that I did not plan, but I knew it would have to come at some point. So I'm gonna hit this button only five times, and in the five times that I hit the button, all five of the anomalies will spawn. One, two, Three, four, five. It works. Is this how Terodem feels? Oh. It works. It works. It works. What a fantastic way to end this episode. I'm all out of time. I cannot. That is so rewarding. That is so nice. Yeah. I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to pick up this devlog again. I might do something a little bit different for tomorrow's video, but I'm going to continue taping the entire taping the entire dev process for this game up until the point where I actually have to start placing things because I don't need you seeing all my my secret spots. That's because you need to actually be able to play the game, right? So, thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, please comment and say, "Ash, you have nice teeth." Or you say whatever you want about my teeth, I guess. I don't, I'm not going to fish for compliments. Have a great day, though, and I'll see you tomorrow. Till then, bye for now.